Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, October 5th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about the 2022 generic congressional vote in which we are looking at this new NPR News, PBS, Marist College poll that shows on the national average, the Democratic Party maintains an eight-point lead over the Republicans in this brand new poll of 1,029 registered voters. The reason why this poll in specific has been the subject of much interest is because of the fact that it is the first poll that has shown the Democrats at a near two. 2018 type of lead. The only other one in previous months was the one from Quinnipiac that showed the Democrats ahead by nine points back in the month of May of 2021. So as we've gotten further along uh, down the line, and as we've seen shifts in overall public sentiment on President Biden, Vice President Harris, the Democrats and Republicans, this is the first real one that we have seen the Democratic Party with a pretty significant lead over the GOP. So I want to go and investigate it as to question whether or not this poll should be treated as the golden standard or whether or not it is just an anomaly because i'm telling you right now as we have already seen from many major news sites they are latching onto this poll using it as an end-all be-all even though many other polls from the economist yougov politico morning consult quinnipiac uh, cnn nbc news all of which show the democrats with a narrow one-point lead or up to a four-point lead but beyond that we have not seen the likes of an eight-point lead in fact the federalist and susquehanna uh, university i believe the university released a poll that shows the republicans ahead by one point so what you're starting to see here is that the the NPR news poll probably is more of an outlier than anything, but is being discussed amongst different media sources, including right wing ones that are pointing to it as a call to action for the Republican Party. And I just wanted to investigate a bit about it because I don't personally think that this poll should be treated as this gold all uh, gold standard end all be all type of poll. The first thing that you would need to take a look at is who was actually polled amongst this sample. They've polled more men, uh, more women than men, which makes sense based off of our registered voters and the amount of people in the nation. In addition, they polled pretty good amounts, I would say, amongst the younger generation and amongst uh, race slash ethnicity. There may be some discrepancies here. Uh, they don't really go dwell beyond white, black, Latino, so they don't go into Asian or Pacific Islander or anything about that. It just remains in this other column. So when I see it, you know, it does sort of make sense. I definitely think that amongst the registered voter body, that white population actually might be higher, but that might have changed over the past couple of years. Uh, so looking at it, I mean, they go into every single type of class, every single type of determination. They go into education by race education, education, race, and gender, white evangelical Christians, area description, area description, and gender, interview type. You know, they go into everything, household income, uh, region, a lot of things are discussed when it comes down to this poll. So the first question that I was really surprised to see was the approval rating of Joe Biden, which sort of tipped this off as a poll that was going to be more favorable towards Democrats than other ones. And the reason being, NPR News, Marist Poll, whatever it is, says that the national average, and I don't say that to be disrespectful at all to the polling company whatsoever, high respect for all of these polling companies, I'm saying it just because I'm getting through the name quickly, wanted to clarify that, don't know why I needed to, but just wanted to clarify that. Looking at the national approval rating though, they have the Joe Biden question here, do you approve or disapprove of the job Joe Biden is doing as president? And you see here that just 46% of the nation, according to Marist College, disapproves of Joe Biden's job as president, and 45% approves. Now, in just the span of under a month, that has changed from what was a nine point, sorry, eight point deficit across here, 51% disapproved on September 3rd, and just 43% approved on September 3rd as well. So you see here that the numbers have changed, fluctuated pretty dramatically. What was an eight point deficit for Joe Biden is now a one point deficit, and that's amongst national adults. The actual poll that was utilized was registered voters, which you can actually see added in on the 538 average. You can see here that amongst this poll that was released, I do not know where it is, I believe it is this Marist College poll, that they've averaged it out to an actual point where the adjusted numbers are 4646, but that actually is a bit of an anomaly. When you take a look at all the other polls surrounding it, I mean, yes, you may see a tie amongst Harris X, but Marist College is also an A plus, uh, sorry, an A rated pollster. IBD, which is also an A plus rated pollster, showed released an initial result with a tie, but actually shows an adjusted result. I'm not entirely sure though, if these polls are pretty accurate. When you take a look at the average itself, I mean, yes, they may be A pollsters, but they aren't matching the average themselves. They aren't matching what a lot of the other media companies are saying. And based off of what has been happening across the nation, there's no real reason as to why public sentiment would shift back for Joe Biden. I mean, you can see here that for the past, what, maybe a month now, nearing a month, actually, yes, over a month now, Joe Biden has been consistently disapproved of by the American public. Sure, the numbers are dropping a little bit, but I mean, you're talking about still a three-point deficit nation 
nationwide, and this poll is showing us, amongst registered voters at least, a zero-point deficit, meaning that Joe Biden is just as approved of as he is disapproved of across the map. Let's go ahead and see if they have the registered voters. Uh, this is the generic ballot question. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to show us the registered voters amongst this group, but when you take a look at the registered voters' results, you will see that it is 46-46. So, all around, based off of just the simple question of Joe Biden, you can already start to see how this pollster may lean towards the left. And it makes sense based off of this final result. We can get into the generic ballot right now because it does provide some context and we'll talk about what would actually happen if this was the actual result. As you can see here, Democrats receive 46% of the vote and Republicans receive 38%. 4% goes to other and 12% of the public seems to be unsure. Now I'm telling you right now, based off of what we know, amongst our previous election results, that the unsure column almost always breaks heavy amounts for the GOP. The reason being, people are sometimes afraid because of the social reaction, the social adversity of saying you are voting for a Republican. Of course, there is also social adversity of saying you're voting for a Democrat in red states, but generally speaking, when you are in the minority party, when Democrats have a trifecta, you are less inclined to say you are voting for the opposition party because you know that somehow there is a majority against you, even if it may not seem like that in your immediate area. You know, Even though you may live in rural Alabama and the people there are very much aligning with you and your conservative values, if you are being questioned, you may be inclined to say you're unsure just out of fear that the pollster itself might judge you people don't want to be judged by any type of person or that the possibility of your response being publicized beyond your local area so there are a lot that needs to be discussed in terms of that unsure column but what we've known from recent electoral uh, results is that that unsure column almost always breaks for the GOP in heavy amounts, sometimes 9 to 10 or 80 to 20. But in this case, it's 12% of the unsure row. This is 12% of the uh, voting group here that is unsure as to how to vote in the uh, final results here when it comes down to the generic ballot. And the generic ballot actually is a very interesting tool, a very helpful tool to determine outcomes. This eight point margin here, again, is very different from the averages. The same way that the approval rating of Joe Biden poll is different than the averages, the averages for the generic congressional vote is that Democrats maintain a three point lead. An eight point lead would bring them back to 2018. If you take a look at 2020, Democrats may have maintained a seven point lead, but that didn't actually end up being the result. Let's hear if we can find a poll from uh, NPR. NPR said back in 2020, if I hope that's not the only one, I guess it is the only one, that they would end up with the Democrats with a victory of six points nationwide. Now that actually overestimated Democrats yet again. Democrats ended up winning by three points on the overall spread itself. And they said that at that period of time, Democrats were ahead by six points. Now that was August. That was not super close to the election. So of course, you can't take that one as just the uh, end all be all for that pollster either. It's not fair to make that determination because it was a different time period. But you can also see here, see here in 2018, they actually seem to have gotten it right. They said Democrats were going to win by nine points, but the difference was they weren't out of the ordinary. In fact, right next to it, there's another poll from, uh, let's see here, Harvard Harris that says the Democrats are ahead by nine points. There's another one from Reuters Ipsos saying seven points, eight points, seven points. The only one that was really an anomaly, the two actually, Rasmussen reports with Republicans plus one and CNN with Democrats plus 13. Again, whoever is calling you, whoever is polling you is likely going to have an impact on your actual results. Maybe it's not necessarily intentional and it rarely ever is intentional because it wastes the point of a poll if you're skewing it in one way or another. But the point is, that if you get a call from CNN and you are someone who doesn't exactly trust CNN as a news source, but you want to answer the poll, you might be inclined to say you are unsure about the vote and thus end up voting for the Republicans. And then that unsure margin, sure, splits off and you have an inaccurate reading in the poll, but the results end up shifting towards the right. A lot of these things need to be taken into consideration when you take a look at the uh, polling companies and what the results are. But the point is, you can see here that an eight point margin was what we saw in 2018. And while NPR Marist College may have gotten it right once, they weren't exactly too far off from the rest of the pollsters, but they absolutely are for the generic ballot in 2022. It would be illogical for the Democratic Party to bank on an eight-point victory, and while it may be something that is not necessarily impossible, it certainly is going to be very, very difficult. It is very difficult to win in an opposition party here with just the generic popular vote, but to go beyond that and try to say you could win by an eight-point margin of victory would bring you to the likes of the 2018 House elections, which just isn't going to happen. 
In 2018, the Democratic Party won the popular vote here by a margin of 7. Point, what is that? 7.6%. It was a margin the Democrats were very happy about, but it was not a margin that was, um, I would say, is not repeatable in 2022. In fact, that margin might be 8.6%, uh, not 7.6%. I apologize for making that mistake. Uh, but overall, what I see from this NBC Marist College poll is that it is off. I think that this definitely does not match what we should be recognizing as genuine pollsters. And when you look at the, uh, not sorry, not genuine pollsters, uh, genuine poll results that are very close to what the average is saying nationwide, uh, and you can also see this sort of revealed in some of the polls' uh, cross tabs here. For instance, when you take a look at the breakdown amongst white voters, for instance, you will see here that they only do it by white, non-white, and then white, black, Latino. They don't go beyond that, unfortunately. But amongst white voters, it seems that the Republican Party receives 47% of the vote compared to the Democratic Party receiving a total of 38% of the vote. Well, when you take a look at the race breakdown, you can see here that there was, in 2020, a 17-point deficit between the two. When it comes down to this most recent election or this upcoming election, it's just a nine-point deficit between the Republicans and the Democrats amongst white voters. That doesn't make sense. It does not make sense for there to have been a 17-point deficit in 2020 and for there, for there to just be a nine-point deficit in this new map. In addition, when you take a look at the numbers, and also I want you to keep in mind that the 2020 presidential election was an election in which Joe Biden was approved of by the public by around seven, eight points. So when Joe Biden is now disapproved of by the American public and was approved of then or favored then, not necessarily you know approved or disapproved, just more so favorability rating, when the favorability rating was higher in 2020 and the exit polls are indicating a worse victory or a lesser margin amongst white voters than what this new poll is telling us, again, you have to question it because it doesn't really make sense. When you go beyond that and you take a look at the gender breakdown. You can see here that amongst men, the Democrats are losing by a margin of eight points. Well, when you go to male voters in the presidential election, is a margin of eight points as well. But amongst female voters, you actually start to see the break away a little bit. It was a 15-point margin amongst female voters in the 2020 election, but amongst here, it's a 22-point margin. Now that's where it starts to get questionable. I don't really buy an eight point margin either right now. Again, understanding that Joe Biden is disapproved of by a higher margin than he was in the 2020 election. In fact, 2020 was a better year than it will be for 2022, I think, for the Democratic Party. So it doesn't really make sense for men to stay the same. And also white voters are a key giveaway that it doesn't make sense based off a lot of these numbers. I mean, when you're taking a look at a lot of the numbers that are uh, shown here, whether it be or just the cross tabs, party identification, region, household income. I mean, looking at every single crosstab, a lot of it is showing an overestimation in Democratic support relative to what actually was revealed in 2020 with the exit polls. You can use Beyond CNN, you can take a look at Pew Research, you can take a look at Fox News, whichever exit polls you would want to see. And in most cases, in fact, according to CNN, in nine times out of 10, you will see that this NPR poll seems to overestimate the amount of Democratic support across the nation. Overestimate the amount of Democratic support across the nation. And when you actually take a look, at the way that the public stood on this issue. Now, they don't seem to be holding generic congressional votes that often. Like I said, there was one in August. There was one in November of 2018. They probably slowed it down largely because of COVID-19 because it seemed that they were actually doing them pretty significantly. Uh, but more recently, you will see that the difference here is that despite the year 2020 being better for Democrats, it seems that the Democrats have a higher opportunity to win in 2022 than they did in 2020. And again, that doesn't really make sense. In addition, it doesn't make sense that 2021 would be a better year than 2018. Again, a lot of these numbers really aren't clicking in terms of the final results. I'm not one to try to discredit pollsters entirely. I definitely think that NPR, PBS, Marist College have been accurate in the past, even 2018. I mean, I showed you they were extremely accurate when it came down to that result, but sometimes they are wrong. And to treat it as the only poll that should be considered when it comes down to the generic congressional ballot, it is not fair to use. It is not fair to make that argument that Democrats have an eight-point lead nationwide. And while one poll may say it, there always are others to average in. There may be sometimes when you are looking at certain pollsters that may seem like anomalies that will end up being correct. For instance, the Iowa polling data in the 2020 election. A lot of polls said that Donald Trump was going to win by one or two points. It ended up being a seven, eight point margin of victory for the Republican Party. And one pollster company in specific predicted that, but at the time was viewed as an outlier. But unfortunately for the Democratic Party, I do not think that this is an outlier that can be treated as the final and actual result. The realistic part of it all is that Joe Biden is disapproved of across the nation. 
that these numbers in terms of the cross tabs simply just don't make sense in terms of who is gaining support relative to the 2020 exit polls. All around here, I am seeing that this poll may have just missed a group of people or may have just completely missampled the pollster, uh, this pollster region entirely, which wouldn't be the worst thing. I mean, larger mistakes have been made and this isn't just some type of uh, push poll by the Democratic Party. I mean, this is a genuine pollster. So of course, mistakes can be made. And of course, it is completely understandable if they are made. But I don't think that using this as a poll, uh, as a means of pushing this idea that Democrats have an eight point lead nationwide is fair. The Democratic Party is likely to lose control of the House and the Senate as we continue into 2022 because of this non-incumbency advantage or this incumbency disadvantage, as I should put it. Uh, you know, when the Democratic Party won in 2018, when the Republicans won in 2014, 2010, Democrats in 2006, things like this don't just happen for no reason. Things like this happen because of the incumbent party, and that is always the case. And if Joe Biden and the Democratic Party wants to return America to a sense of normalism and a sense of realism, that's what's going to happen in 2022. It's not because they want to make that the reality. It's simply because that's how American politics has worked for the past two decades, in fact, for the past half century when it comes down to midterm years, and it's likely how it will work in 2022, without a doubt. If I was to put money on it, I would. And I do think that the Democratic Party is much closer to a three-point lead nationwide than they are to an eight-point lead. Well, NPR, Marist College, uh, PBS, yes, respected pollsters, and when it comes down to uh, presidential races and also some other congressional races, they can also be wrong. And I've seen a lot of people ask you guys, a lot of you guys asked me to cover this pollster in specific, and I just want to address some of my concerns with the validity of this pollster when it comes down to this individual result on the 2022 numbers, and just understand and walk you guys through why I wouldn't exactly use this as uh, my final and end-all be-all pollster for this race. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 midterm election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.